Hey guys, Level Cap here. Today we're going to talk about how to win Walker Assault when you're playing as the Rebel team. I've seen this happen about three, maybe four times when playing for about 17 hours total now. So it's a very low win ratio at the moment, but I think you can actually balance that out if most of the people, or at least half the people on the Rebel team, have a better idea of what to do. Now, winning as Rebels can come down to five things. You don't have to have all five of these things working amazingly to win a game as Rebels, but every little thing can help. The first thing I would say that's probably the most important is air superiority. Getting your fighters up in the air, getting more of them up in the air, and dominating the enemy. The Rebels actually have better fighters than the Empire in this one. Can be a little bit tricky at the start when it's X-Wing versus TIE Fighters because the TIE Fighters are technically more maneuverable, but as long as you get the numbers game and anticipate the new TIE Fighters coming in, you should be able to control the skies. This will not only help just keep TIE Fighters off of your enemies, but it'll allow you to basically bombard the enemy infantry from above and help the rebels control the uplinks. Plus, when the AT-AT armor becomes vulnerable, X-Wings and A-Wings do massive damage to AT-ATs, so they're probably one of the best damage outputs early in the game. Now, the next tip is incredibly important, and that is to focus fire down one AT-AT. Don't shoot both of them at the same time when they're exposed. The one you want to focus on is the one on the Rebel's right side or the Empire's left side. This one continuously has the best view of the entire battlefield and can do the most damage for the Empire, so if you take it out early game, it's a huge benefit to the Rebels. I consistently see games where there's enough combined damage to kill at least one AT-AT, AT, but instead it's spread out over two AT-ATs and just taking down one AT-AT helps so much to stop some of that damage incoming on the rebel side. Now the next tip is pretty basic, but I'm gonna add some details to it that you might have not thought about, and that's uplink control. The longer you control the uplinks before the Y-Wings come in for their bombing run, the longer the AT-AT is exposed, the more damage you can do to it. The thing that I see though, is that almost all the Rebels seem to focus their small arms fire on the AT-AT. Unless you have high damaging weapons that are gonna do a lot of damage to the AT-AT, you should probably avoid focus firing the AT-AT and more focus on keeping the Empire from retaking your uplinks. That is more important if you only have small arms that really aren't going to do much. One strafing run from an A-wing or an X-wing on an AT-AT can pretty much equal the firepower of an entire squadron of rebels with small arms. Grenades, on the other hand, actually will do some pretty effective damage against AT-ATs, but it's usually only viable when the AT-AT is in one of those narrow passes and there's a lot of rebels by the base of it. Then you can dish out some massive grenade damage, and especially those ion grenades. But other than that, you should mostly be focusing on just maintaining control of the uplinks as the rebels if you don't have any means of dealing good damage to the AT-AT, because most of the time you're focus firing an AT-AT and then the Imperials come in and they just kill you and retake the uplink, and that doesn't really help you so much if you do five damage to an AT-AT. Now this next tip is so effective that I think it's a little bit game breaking and once people figure it out, we're gonna start seeing a lot more Rebel wins. This is Orbital Strikes. They do massive damage to AT-ATs. I'm not sure on the exact damage numbers, but people have claimed that they've done 90% damage to an AT-AT with one Orbital Strike. I don't know if it's that high, but I've seen an AT-AT go from almost full health to pretty much zero in a matter of seconds. So if you find an orbital strike as a rebel, do not waste it on infantry. Hold it, bide your time, wait till that AT-AT is exposed, and then basically let loose. And use it on the AT-AT with the most health. If there's one that's only got a little bit of health left, then you're gonna be wasting that orbital strike. Take down the one with the most health, and then basically you can just focus fire the weaker one later. If literally everybody on the Rebel team knew about this, then I don't see why there's any reason that the Rebels should ever lose a game of Walker Assault, at least in the beta right now. I'm sure a lot of this will be patched and balanced later. This beta doesn't represent a balanced version of Walker Assault. And then the final tip I have for the Rebels is using the Snowspeeder tow cable to instantly kill an AT-AT. This might seem obvious, but I constantly see Snowspeeder pilots going for the weaker AT-AT towards the end of the game. You only have enough time to tow cable one AT-AT. It seems like you could tow cable two, but there's even a video of some guy tow cabling two AT-ATs, but it still has the Empire win because the death animation isn't fast enough, and so it actually 
plays the reactor blowing up when the ATAT is already dead. So if you're flying a snowspeeder, take down the stronger ATAT and hopefully your team will focus fire down the other one. Of course, there's always the possibility of having two snowspeeder pilots going for each ATAT, but this is pretty unlikely and it's only going to work if the rebels have complete air superiority, which if they already have, chances are you're not going to need two snowspeeders to take down ATATs. The damage output should already be amazing. So those are my tips for winning as Rebels, and just to rehash it, it's air control as early as possible in the game, then focus firing down one ATAT, -AT, the one that is on the Rebels' right side. Uh, Uplink control, even when the ATAT -AT is exposed, I would say if your infantry only go for it if you have the EMP charge on your gun, or an ion grenade in your close quarters. Then of course there's the orbital strike, so if you get one, just hold on to that, do not use it until the ATAT -AT is exposed, and then of course the snow speeder as the last ditch Hail Mary effort. So hopefully this video will help facilitate some more rebel victories. As always guys, I hope you enjoyed the video and I'll see you next time. This is Level Cap signing off.